What's the hook? Yeah, I just like, you know, we want to do something that's positive. We ain't trying to F the police like the NWA used to do back in the day. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. The hook is the police is knocking at your door, man. Okay. So you gotta be yeah. be on the up and up. I mean, what what's I mean? So they knocking at the door while they're running away? Are they doing something in the house they ain't supposed to be doing? Yeah, pretty much, pretty <laughs> much, man. But it's uh, um, it's, it's kind of like um, uh, the main theme is my boy got a warrant, and uh, you know, he's he's just running from different places, different places. Um, until he get caught, you know. All right. Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, trying to trying to touch bases on something everybody's familiar with, you know. And no, I'm not familiar with that, man. Not everybody, not everybody, but I hear you, man. Uh, I know you know that's your story. You're telling your story. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, we just, you know, we're a Christian organization, so we try to do everything we do on the up and up, so that's why I got to be careful what we accept, you know, in terms of production that, that we do, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, oh, okay, I see now, I see now, okay. Yeah, you went to our website, yeah. so, yeah, if you went to our website, so you probably seen that, you know, I got the Bible verses quoted, I'm led by the Lord, so, and I, you know, I deal with all kind of stuff, man, you know, I'm just here to do a service. But at the same time, I don't want to be promoting a message that is not, uh, you know, to be uplifting to God's community. You know what I'm saying? So if it's something like run from the police, when the police are actually, I know the police are crooked. There's crooked people everywhere. But at the same time, if you haven't done anything wrong, why are we running? You know, so it must be something going on in the house. And I don't want to be promoting, you know, drugs or, you know. Uh, stuff like that in the house that you know if they get if they hot with some with some drugs on them they running and dumping stuff in the tr- in the toilet I don't want to be shooting that kind of video you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah yeah man I get you I get it man that's real yeah man I didn't know there was the, uh, I read a little bit because I, I searched last night so I just you know down it down the number I didn't read too much yeah. but yeah man yeah if you guys can't do it I I I, I totally understand man because. Yeah. yeah, man, that's that's a whole different ball game, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. So I mean, it's not that we wouldn't be interested in 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 you know supporting you and your your music career. It's just that some things we just have to, you know, we can't align ourselves with because you know that's what we believe. But let me ask you this, man: Why you called in anyway? I always ask people these two questions anyway. Um, do um, do you know for sure that you'll be in heaven when you die? Yes. Okay. And then the second question is, why should God let you into heaven? Oh, uh, man, because I've been through so much uh, with my with my life, man, that uh, pretty much um, I kind of stopped praying for a while. Not, not stopped believing, but I stopped praying for a while, and uh, I felt God brought me down to my lowest, you know, to my lowest, and uh, just to let me see, you know, without Him, you know, I can't get through this whole life, you know, without having that connection to God. So uh, I started praying more and, you know, I started having these visions, you know, these different visions. And, um, you know, that just connected me to God. And as soon as I put money aside and started praying more and praying for, you know, the things that he gave me uh, naturally free, you know, uh, that's when everything started uh, rolling in, got a new car, uh, got a new job that pays well. Um, able to save some money. Uh, my relationships with people are way better. So um, yeah, I, I totally believe. I totally believe, man. That's a connection that me and God got personally. I don't go to church as much as I should, but I know that connection with me and God, man. And without Him, I wouldn't have none of these things. And I feel like He brought me down to my lowest to show me that. Mm-hmm. As soon as I as soon as I started doing what I was supposed to do with that connection, uh, man, the the, the the sky's the limit. You know, I believe I could do anything with, with him first, you know. Yeah. All right, well, the reason I ask those questions, I appreciate you being honest with it. Uh, the reason why I ask those two questions, I always compare with what you say with what the Bible says. You Have you read, you, you know the Bible, the King James Bible? Have you read it? Uh, I've read some of it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, the Bible says that you must be born again. This is what G- John uh, Jesus told, um, um, uh, what's the name, uh, in, in, in John 3, 
what's the dude's name? I gotta pull up his name. <laughs> he was a uh, yeah. rabbi. Uh, his, uh, Nicodemus, that's his name. He's a ruler of the Jews. He said, you must be born again. You know what being born again means? Uh, fresh start, new start? No, actually he was saying, uh, I'll read it to you. He says, uh, John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered, said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into the uh, the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So that's a physical birth. Was Jesus talking about a physical birth? No. In 3, 5 it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. So what does it mean to be born of the water and born of the Spirit? Yeah, it's totally different. The, wa the water sounds like a physical, like through, through the womb and the spirit. I, I can't explain the spirit. I, I don't know <laughs> how, how can a man be born through the spirit again. Yeah. Well, you know, man is more than just flesh because, uh, you know, you go to a funeral, you see the body there. So that flesh is there, but they're gone. Their spirit has went into eternity. So we are actually, and then in Genesis uh, 2, it says that God breathed into the uh, nostrils and, uh, and breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we are soul, spirit, and flesh. We are three in one, just like God is three in one. You got God the Father, God the Word, who is Jesus, and God the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, 1 John 5, 7. So I like to always let people know that we are walking in the flesh but what we cannot see is the spirit, the spirit world. You can't see the wind. That's spirit. You can't see gravity. That's spirit. You can't see the angels. They're spirit, but they're all around us. So it's a reality beyond our fleshly world. And we need to be born of the spirit. Now, what does he mean by born of the water? If you look in John 4, the next verse, next chapter over, he explains it with the woman at the well. So he there was a woman at a well digging for water. And so this is what he said her to her. Jesus answered said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So we can drink water, it quenches our thirst, but we get thirsty again. Physical water is not eternal water. But but then in 4.14 it says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give thee, him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing, springing up into each everlasting life. We all want to live forever. Well, we can live forever, but we need the water that Jesus gives us, which is a spiritual water. See, God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, spirit is the spiritual realm, and truth is the word of God. That's why I'm quoting scripture because that's the truth. That's the God. That's where we get our truth from. So, if you understand that Jesus is saying you need to be born of the spiritual birth that I'm that I give you, only He can make you saved, and only He can give you a uh, life, spiritual life. We all have physical life. But we, we didn't decide on who our parents would be. We don't decide when we die. We don't decide who our brothers or sisters. We don't decide anything about our life. We don't decide what race we are, what sex we'll be. You know, we don't decide our height, our age, nothing like that. God decides when in, in, in this era of time that he wants to give us, bring us. He brought us in the 20, 21st century. He could have birthed you back in Jesus' day. But God decided to bring you here for a purpose and that purpose is to hear this word of God and also to be born again by believing on Jesus Christ and then to go share that message with people. You have a voice, you have a passion, you're an artist, you're creative. God is the creator. So God loves creative people because he's the creator. He created heaven and earth out of nothing. He spoke and it came into existence. Well, you speak and your words are powerful. So I would encourage you, first of all, 
use that creativity power to uplift the creator and not uplift things of this world but but more importantly but more importantly this truth that I'm speaking to you from the word of God is not my truth that's why I like to quote scriptures because what I believe in is the holy word of God and so it tells us we must be born again and you know in John 3 that's the same passage that we get the most quoted verse in the world John 3:16 so this is the same. So he told them, you must be born again. Now how is he telling them to be born again? In 3, uh, uh, 14 it says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And guess what? He was lifted up on a cross. And in 3.15 it says, That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. See, it's the object of your faith. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Bless, bless, yes. bless. Yeah. It's the object of your face that saves you, not yourself. So you can't turn around your life. You can't stop sinning because once you've sinned, you've broken all the law. How many sins did Adam do in the Garden of Eden before God killed him? Yeah, quite a few. No, he only did one. Remember? One. There was only okay. there was only one. Yeah, he disobeyed him. Yeah, he disobeyed him. He ate from the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and, of it, good and evil. Right? That wasn't a great... I mean, that's just eating fruit. He didn't kill anybody, did he? Mm -mm, no. Nope. He just ate some fruit. So, right. it's not how bad you sin. Is it? You can't say, well, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. No, it doesn't matter. If you've broken one law, one commandment of God, you're guilty. And we're all guilty. We've all broken the law. It says all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. So we have no hope in ourselves. Our hope only lies in Jesus. And you know why? Because Jesus is God in the flesh. You know what Emmanuel stands for? God with us. God with us. So Jesus is God with us. And so God cannot sin. So when Jesus walked on this earth, he did not sin. He was the only perfect human being to, to be born of a woman and live a perfect life from life into death. So we can go by his righteousness, right? So he, he opened up the door to heaven for us because he became a man. Now a man can enter heaven. Before then, only the angels could enter heaven. But now God is, Jesus is the first man to enter heaven. That's because he died on the cross for our sins. And he shed his blood, which paid for our sins. He could have died, but if there was no payment for sins, we would all be uh, in hell. But his blood, his blood has eternal life in it. The life of the flesh is in the blood, right? So... Yeah. yeah, because the blood is what gives you all your oxygen to all your cells so it can live and all your nutrients. So everything you eat goes through your bloodstream. That's why that's why, um, you know, um, uh, um, uh, if someone is HIV positive, they're they're on, you know, they, they're going to die because it's in their bloodstream. Right. It's just a matter of time. Right. Well, we're all going to die. We all our blood is temporary, but. Jesus' blood is eternal. His flesh died, but it rose from the grave in three days, as he prophesied. So now his flesh lives forever because he has the, the power to, to resurrect us, to make us born again. So that's all. That's the most important thing, man. Once you get that straight, you won't have a fear of death. You'll know that God is your Savior. You'll walk in that truth, and then you'll go preach that truth, just like I'm sharing it with you, a stranger. But it's something that every man needs to hear, because we're going to die one day. We don't know when we're going to die, but we better be ready. And the only way to be ready is to call upon the name of the Lord. And that's what Romans uh, 10 says. It says, 10, 13, 4, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. There's only one name given amongst men under heaven whereby we must be saved. And that's Jesus Christ. Does that make sense, man? Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. No? Yeah. So, so basically, you gotta go through, uh, go through Jesus to be born again? That's it. 
That's it. That's the only way. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. Jesus made that claim. Why did, You know why they put Jesus on the cross? Because he equated himself with the Father. He said, I and the Father are one. They called him blasphemous. They took up rocks to stone him. They hated him because he claimed to be God. So either he was God or he was a liar. I believe he was God. And the Bible tells me this. And people stop at 3.16. It says, but look, if you read 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who is Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him. So that's all you have to do. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is written in scripture. That's written in heaven. That is a legally binding uh, thing. God is held by that, and we are held by that. So on the day of judgment, I'm going to say, God, your word says, whosoever believeth in Jesus should not perish. So I deserve to go to heaven based off of your word. I believe it. And then 317, it says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. So Jesus didn't come to condemn us. But that the world through him might be saved. He came to be our savior. So we can't look anywhere else. It's Jesus is our only salvation. Without Jesus we are nothing. And then 18 it says this. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. You don't have to wait to judgment day. If you say no I don't believe, I don't believe Jesus. I, I, I got to do it myself. You are already condemned. You don't even have to wait. You're going to hell. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Right. See? And John 3.36 says it like this. He that believeth on the Son of God. I'm sorry. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. See you've been living in God's wrath man. And I want you out of that wrath. And you only have to do is change your belief. That's why I ask those two questions. Do you know for sure? And why should God let you into heaven? Yeah. So how do I work on that? Do I repent or how do I change change my life around? All right. I, I like the question, man. This is this. I'll read a couple of scriptures to answer that. In Acts 16... 30. It says, so this is a Philippian jailer. Um, and, and I'll read 16, 25 through 32. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. So they were in prison. And then the earthquake happened and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. So that was a spiritual thing that God shook this earth and opened up the doors of the prison because his uh his uh people were in prison Paul and uh Philip I mean Paul and Silas all right and then it says and the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out a sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had fled because he would have died they, they would have killed him because he you know he let the prisoners go he was supposed to be on watch. But then, 28, But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas. And he's saying the same thing you just said. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So this is a man they realize the power of God is before him. And he's asking God's man, Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? And the scripture tells us that with the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Well, Paul and Silas, this is what they said in 31. And they said, now this is established, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And thy house. What must. What must you do to be saved? Believe 
on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 says it like this, For by grace are ye saved, by faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Right. So do you believe that right. Jesus is your Savior? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, let me ask you that then. Um, let me ask you that question again. Why should God let you into heaven? Because I believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You see how your answer Amen, is different? Right? You see how your answer is different? Yeah, man. Now you get it. You get it. Why? And this is this is what I always like to show with people. See? It said 10, 9. I'm going to read this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, that's what you just did, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So take that to the bank with you. Take that to, to heaven and say, God, I confess. When, when I was asked by Kale over the phone, who, why should I go to heaven? I confess the Lord Jesus. I believe in Jesus. See? Yeah. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed don't be ashamed man walk around proudly and boldly with that confidence knowing that you're going to heaven and share that same message with people for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him you just called upon his name for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved that's what it says and then let me just share this with you. It says, how then shall they call on him and who they have not believed? You've heard of him, but you didn't believe on him. Because when I first asked you, why should you go to heaven? You talked about how God has got you through many things and you've straightened up your life and you were believing in your works. So you, you, you had a head knowledge, but you didn't have a heart belief. So how can they call on him and who they have not believed? And how should they believe in him and who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? See? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And that's what I just did to you today as I preached the gospel of peace. God wants peace with you. You, head, you were headed to hell, but now you're in peace with God because you're believing in his only way of salvation, which is Jesus Christ. All right? Yeah, thank you, Kel, man. That cleared up a lot for me because, man, that's, that's, a, that's a blessing from God right there because I had those answers, but, God, I mean, those questions, but no one could really answer them for me, man. So mm. now I know what I, I need to do, you know, to to, to further my um, my belief. And uh, Amen. I think I might have to change, you know, some of my, my lyrics. I've been thinking about that, man. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful, man. Yeah, so I'm thinking of, yeah, I'm thinking right now, um, you know, my purpose, man, is probably just to, to spread the word of, uh, of Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> oh, man, now you're talking. That is it. That is your purpose, man. That's why we're on this earth, man, It's to spread the word of God. Paul said it like this in Galatians. Let me pull it up. Man, I appreciate you listening, man, because this, uh, this is what it's all about, man. I hope you spend this time with somebody else. Definitely. Um, um, for, for uh, one ten, for do I persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ, brethren. I certify you, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I ne neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. So God is through the preaching of the gospel. God has revealed himself to you. Now he's answered those questions that you had. 13 is for ye have heard of my conversation time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jewish religion above my many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of our fathers. And he was a religious Jew, but he didn't know. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood, 
neither went I to Jerusalem to them that were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to, P to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, same, save J James the uh, Lord's brother. So this is Paul. He got rev special revelation from, from God for, um, in, uh, in, in the mount in, in Arabia. Just like uh, Moses was in the mount. And so this is where we get the gospel from, from, from Paul's uh, writings. He wrote uh, Romans to Philemon, um, about 11 books, 10 or 11 books. He says, Now the things that which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but they had heard only. That he which persecuted us in times past now proceed of the faith which one, which uh, one he destroyed, and they glorify God in me, and that's what you should be doing. It's going out and reaching people for Christ so they can glorify God in you. They're gonna see it's a change in you. They're gonna see, man, it's something about this guy that's different. You changing your 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 your, your uh, words, and that's that's the thing that I, you know. It just I can't, you know, as a businessman. Yeah, it makes sense, but as a Christian, it doesn't make sense because you're preaching the wrong message. Now that you got your message straight, hey, I can be behind you, man, and I, I you know, I love to, you know, be of service and help get your video out there because we're preaching the gospel together. And in First Corinthians, First Corinthians, set uh, one seventeen, it says, "For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect." For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Preach the cross of Christ. It's the power unto salvation. Mm, that makes sense right there. That makes sense. Do you have a Do you have a Bible, man? Or you can get a Bible app on your phone, a King James Bible. Okay, yeah, I might have to do that. Yeah, because somebody else told me about that. Um, the King James, what is it, sixteen something? What, what version is it? Yeah, just KJV. Uh, I mean, it's based off sixteen eleven. Is when it was uh, supposed to be authorized uh, by the by King James. Um, I don't follow a lot of history because everything has to be taken by faith, right? We, I wasn't there 400 years ago. No, no one that's living today was there 400 years ago. So we take it by faith. So what I do is I look at the words and I. And if it says God cannot lie, it has to be true. And if there's one error in it, it's not God's word. And so I don't trust any of the new translations because there's errors in them. I've looked at them. I've read them. And I can point out errors in them. But I trust the King James Version. That's it. Because it has no error in it. It's what you've just got saved from. I just quoted from the King James Bible. And it's what saves souls. Jesus said like this, he said, the words that I speak, they are life, they are spirit, and they are life. So if there's spirit, then there's a spirit behind that Bible. And I only want the Holy, I only want the Holy Spirit, I don't want an evil spirit. And so I only trust, I don't want a lying spirit, because if there's a lie in that Bible, it's a lying spirit behind it. I only want the Holy Spirit, because there's nothing but good that comes from the Holy Spirit. And there's life in it. So it's a living word of uh, God. Yeah. Okay. Sixteen eleven, and I could download it. So I'm gonna download that today. Yeah. Um, Kale, man. Thank you so much, man. God <laughs> bless you. Thank, thank you, man. Cause I don't know. He's been working on me for a while. I just didn't know what direction to take or what what churches to go to or or what, but. Go yeah, to his man, word. you another one, man. You're like another angel that he sent, you know, <laughs> or something, man, to, to talk to me today, man, on this very day, man. You gave me the direction I was looking for. Amen. So Amen. I pretty, yeah, I pretty much see what, because uh, I don't think everybody got, like, the talent you have to talk to me like that, for me to understand everything, and then with my talent to reach out to people, I think that's what I'm here to do, man, is to reach out and get people so safe. Man, you got you think got, everybody's as special you, as us, man. Yeah, you got a talent to reach people, man. And hey, I I would love to, you know, help, you know, do the video so you can reach people for the truth of God, man. That would be amazing. Definitely. Definitely. 
Definitely. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm, I got some things. Yeah, I've been working on. So. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and execute, man. And this is the direction you want me to go. I felt it in my heart, but I just wanted to please the world. But it's not about that, you mm. know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Man, you preach it, yeah, man. So, uh, hey, man, I appreciate. It. Call me anytime, man. You got my number. If you have any questions, but when you're ready to execute, man, we'll work something out. I'll definitely be there to get your video done and, and get you get you out there. So no problem because it's not about getting you out there; it's getting the word of God out there, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely, Kel. All right, cool, man. Hey, well, man, thanks again, uh, and I have your number, and I will be calling you back with some new material, man. I just gotta work on it. Yeah, no, that's fine. And if you have any Bible questions, man, call me anytime because you know I study the stuff daily. And uh, I want to help encourage you in the word of the Lord because you have the truth now. Now you need to equip your truth. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So I would encourage you to read a chapter a day of the Bible and start start in the New Testament. And just read and read, read, read the story of Jesus. Uh, I would say start in John. We just we, we started in John looking at John. So start at John 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And Jesus is the Word, and in one fourteen it says, "In the Word, um, um, and the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, as of the only begotten of the Father." So it's just so much truth in the Scripture, and it's hard to understand to the novice. You're you're Christian. I mean, you're you're a babe in Christ, and uh, you're eating of the 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 milk of the Word. But eventually, as you continue to study in that Word, you'll start to eat more of the. Um, of the flesh and the meat media parts and understand the deeper understanding of some of these things but uh, i want to be here to just kind of help encourage you but you had a holy spirit now and the holy spirit you need that no man teach you. you don't need to go to a church you are part of the body of the christ the church you are born again into the church body um, because you believe on jesus christ it's so many gifts that he's given you he's giving you eternal life he's giving you a new family He's giving you uh, a new spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. I mean, God has given gifts unto men. He's giving you rewards in heaven. All because you believe. You trusted him without seeing. That's what, that's what Jesus told Thomas. Thomas said, I won't, be, I won't believe unless I see the nail prints in his hand. And then Thomas finally seen him. And Jesus said, blessed are those that believe without seeing. So God is blessing you because you did it his way. Believe without seeing. All right, uh -huh. man. Thank you, Kale, man. Yeah. Awesome, you, man. Call me anytime, man. And also, man, if it's okay with you, I rec I record it. anytime I talk about the Bible to someone. I always record these conversations. Is that okay that I recorded it? If not, I can delete it. You know, because I know you're a public figure. I don't know if you you know if you want it recorded or not. Yeah. But, hey, it's it's another way just to uh -huh. show God God reaching people, right? Exactly, definitely, definitely. That's a blessing. I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. God gave me. I'm told you, I'm sleepy last night, man, and I just snapped the photo and called. I didn't really read too much, so I was blessed, man. I was blessed today. Now I know what I need to do, you know. So I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed right now, man. Hey, Amen. You know? Awesome. Well, call me anytime. What's your name again, man? Uh, Taja. Taja. T a j a. T a j a h. A H. Okay. All right, Taja, man. God bless you, man. Talk to me. I I love to hear from you. Call me. Call me sometime. You know, in the, in the near future. Okay, Kel. Thank you, man. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.